You better listen, my brother, cause if you do, you can hear there are voices still calling from across the years. And they're crying across the ocean, they're crying across the land, and they will until we all come to understand. None of us are free. None of us are free. None of us are free. And one of us is chained. None of us are free. 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 And one of us is chained. None of us are free. There are people in darkness. Welcome to the Labor Radio Podcast Network live stream, which happens every Wednesday night. I'm Tanya Hutchins with the Machinist Union's Activate Live webcast, and my co-host today is Jeremy Waugh. Uh, thanks, Tanya. My name is Jeremy Waugh. I'm the host of the Break Time Breakdown podcast affiliated with Smart Local 110 out of Louisville, Kentucky. Our first guest is Charlie Fleming, who is the Georgia AFL-CIO president, who has been hard at work getting out the vote. And I want to say congratulations, Charlie, for getting out that vote for November 3rd. Well, thank you very much. It's a very exciting time here in Georgia. Uh, you know, we have, uh, we've always worked very hard, but, uh, you know, we knew this day was coming. And uh, I wasn't positive that it was going to happen this year, but uh, it was, it's just really exciting and everybody's working really hard to finish the job. We got, we got a little more work to do here in Georgia. But Charlie, uh, did you get a break or did you hit the ground running November 4th? No, we actually did take a couple of days as soon as the election was off uh, over in uh, the general election. And then, of course, we did take a few days at Thanksgiving. So, but we're back up. We've been running hard. Uh, we've uh, we finished the uh, the re voter registration phase of the uh, campaign for the runoff. And now we're into uh, making sure people uh, uh, apply for their absentee ballots and, and make sure that they... Uh, are able to do the, the vote the easy way. And so far we've got 1.2 million Georgians have uh, applied for an absentee ballot, which bodes pretty well for us. At least it did in the general. We think it will again in the runoff. Now you mentioned the Monday deadline for registration. So now you're moving forward with the absentee ballots. I know a lot of union members are phone banking out of state, including machinist union members that I work with. What is happening on the ground right now with union members that are still helping to get out that vote? Well, uh, before I start that, I just let you know, I'm also a machinist. I've been a machinist for 40 years, uh, and I happened to be with uh, our international president in Atlanta on Saturday night, uh, Brother Bob Martinez. So it's, uh, uh, that being said, uh, no, we're, we're getting a lot of help from a lot of folks, but uh, we're also, uh, we're doing a labor to labor program here at the Georgia AFL and a lot of our unions and, and, and help is coming on the independent expenditure side, which is working with the community, which is great. Uh, we have great relationships with the community, but I'll give you an example. We here at the Georgia AFL yesterday made over 15,000 phone calls and we dropped lit at over 2,000 homes, union members' homes. Now, Charlie, is there anything that you're doing differently now than, you know, when you were getting ready for November 3rd? Because I know you've talked in the past about how, you know, the demographics are changing in Georgia. Yeah, I, the, the, we're not really doing a lot different. I mean, you, you, this is not broke. And we're, we're, we think it's uh, in the right direction. Uh, but, yeah, the Democrats have certainly changed. Uh, we're working with our membership. I think there's just been a little more help for us now in the runoff than there was in the general election. And that's where some of the help has come from some of the national affiliates and, and the national unions that are working on that independent expenditure side. So we may not be door knocking, but we can still drop literature, correct? Well, Absolutely. We're doing as much of that as we uh, can. Uh, now, I will admit that a number of our community partners are knocking on doors, but that's a personal decision or an organizational decision. Uh, and uh, we're good with that. But at the Georgia AFL, especially with the pandemic, uh, 
the numbers going up and up. Uh, even here in Georgia, they've, they've gone up significantly. Uh, we just don't feel comfortable, and a lot of our affiliates don't feel comfortable. So we're not going to put them in that situation. We're just going to uh, the, drop the lit and move on. Now, on the community level, uh, those organizations uh, are using all the uh, the PPEs and all the things that uh, they need to do to uh, to make it safe for the members. But as an organization, the Georgia AFL just felt like it wasn't the right thing for us. Charlie, I read a statistic that it had the number of 17-year-olds that are turning 18 before the January 5th runoff. And it was something like more than 20,000. Um, is there a special outreach to those members? Because I'm seeing it from where I am in Washington, D.C. Yeah, yeah, the, I think the number is around 23,000. Uh, and uh, yes, there's been outreach, not necessarily so much from the Georgia AFL, uh, but from like the Young Democrats, and I'm sure the Republicans are doing the same. Uh, now, the one thing that we have done uh, is, uh, as we have done in the past, is work with our historically uh, black uh, colleges in the, in the state and places like Georgia Georgia State University. Uh, we've we've reached out to those young people and encouraged them to uh, and uh, to go vote and get, or certainly get registered and then go vote. Uh, but no, that's that's going to be an inter interesting dynamic to see how many of those twenty three thousand actually do get registered and actually do go to the polls. And a good sign for us is that, you know, study after study is showing that more young people are open to unions um, and more people in general are open to unions. You know, what kind of feedback are you getting back, getting back, talking or hearing from voters? Potentially. Well, we're, get, we're getting a tremendous feedback. Of course, our, our union membership, it's been overwhelming uh, here in this state. We're, we're getting over 80 percent back saying, uh, you know, that they support us and support our candidates. I was talking to uh, some folks on the community side that said that their their feedback has been uh, very over, overwhelming. Uh, of course, you know, there's actually a couple of Georges here. You've got the metro area of, of the of Atlanta and the and in which quite honestly over 50% of our members live uh, and work. Uh, but then there's also the Chatham County that down in Savannah, there's the Macon's in the middle of Georgia, there's the Augusta. And so where you go, uh, you know, uh, the more rural the area is, is probably where we might struggle a little bit more than, than uh, the urban area. Uh, but we did very well in Savannah. We did very well in uh, middle Georgia, Macon, Columbus, uh, Albany area. And, uh, we could probably do a little bit better in the Augusta area, but we could, you know, we, we more than broke even in the Augusta area. We were just hoping maybe to do about 65, 70%. Now, I've heard you also say in the past that, you know, even though this is an uphill climb, you remain positive. And I know a lot of remaining positive, you know, is up here, is mental, but, you know, we're still dealing with voter suppression issues. Uh, they don't seem to go away. Um, we're hearing more about that now in Georgia. Can you tell us a little bit about what's happening? Well, yeah, well, just uh, over the weekend, uh, Cobb County, which was a county that actually had flipped uh, blue uh, last cycle, two years ago in the governor's race, uh, they have just announced that they are going to have, um, I think it's seven or eight uh, less voting locations for early voting than they did in the general. And you know, uh, they've been questioned about it and they're saying they just don't have the staff and uh, and they're trying to do the the responsible. But keep in mind, Cobb County is not run by uh, the Democrats or whatever. I mean, it's been historically been a red uh, red county and it just recently flipped uh, both for Stacey Abrams and for uh, Joe Biden. So uh, those kind of things are going on and will continue to go on. and. Uh, you know, that's where most people nationally probably have heard now of Stacey Abrams, who's uh, mm -hmm. our endorsed candidate for governor a couple of years ago and a, a good friend of labor. Uh, she started an organization called Fair Fight. Uh, they, that, that's one of the areas where uh, we stay in our lane and we, that, that's their expertise is voter suppression and stuff. So we work with them, but they, they sort of, uh, 
drive a number of community groups and the labor movement and, and keeping us updated on, on what's going on when it comes to voter suppression and those kind of issues. Take us through what message you're sending out, whether it's knocking on doors or dropping that lit, you know, talking to Georgia voters right now, what do you want them to know as we get closer to January 5th? Well, this is actually an opportunity to take back our, our, our country for the working man and working woman. Uh, you know, there's so much at stake in, in, in this, these two elections. Uh, if it's a 50-50 uh, Senate, obviously, uh, with the Democrats now at, in the White House, uh, Vice President Harris will be able to be the deciding uh, vote. Uh, that being said, you'll have things like the, the PRO Act, which is something that the labor movement has made, uh, obviously, a priority because it does away with so many things that have hurt workers uh, in this country over the years, whether it, it'll literally do away with right to work. It will also do away with uh, the misclassification of workers. Uh, it's going to do so many things to level the playing field for workers in this country, and certainly in the South, where, as you know, and, and, and y'all know that, uh, you know, that's, that's how a lot of these bills and a lot of these uh, things that we now have to deal with in this country, they all started pretty much in the South because they could do it in the South. And then they tried to force it on Pennsylvania or force it on Illinois. And so this is going to, this is a huge, huge deal. And that's why it's so exciting and, and important for us as uh, folks in the, in the Southern uh, region. Uh, if we can actually level the playing field for working families in this country by electing these two uh, senators that uh, people that really do care about workers and working families, uh, I think it'd be terrific. I think that's one of the biggest challenges is just passing along to people, whether they have voted before or not, just how important this election is and how it can affect their lives. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, we're also telling them, that, let's be honest, uh, Kelly Offner was uh, appointed. She wasn't elected. Uh, she's one of the probably the richest uh, senator, uh, even though she was appointed. She's probably the richest senator there. She, I don't know if she's a billionaire, but she's right at it. Uh, and David Perdue made his career on outsourcing jobs. You know, he brags about being a job creator at, uh, uh, you know, uh, what is it, uh, Dollar General. Well, what kind of job is, is has he created? He's basically turned a couple of companies around by outsourcing the work, uh, and outsourcing uh, jobs. And uh, and that's why neither one of them will speak on the record. If, uh, David Perdue wouldn't even, um, wouldn't even um, debate John Ossoff the other day uh, here uh, last Sunday. Uh, and Warnock and uh, Loeffner, Loeffner, the only thing she could say is that you know, made misleading remarks about Reverend Warnock about how he's going to defund the police and how he doesn't support our military, which is crazy because his dad served in the military. And uh, Reverend Warnock is uh, one of 12 uh, siblings. He was the first one in his uh, family to go uh, to college. Uh, obviously, he was the, became the pastor of the Martin Luther King uh, Jr.'s church. Uh, the most, one of the most iconic churches in the country, Ebenezer Baptist, and to say some of the things that he has said is just uh, really, uh, it's, it's crazy, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of both Democrats. They've stayed on the issues. They stayed on talking about what they can bring to the working man and what working woman in this state. And, uh, you know, other than that, uh, you know, it's up to us now to, to get folks to the polls and make it happen. And that's what we're trying to encourage our members and the, uh, the public that we speak to is this is really, really a big deal. Uh, if you want to level the playing field in, in Washington, uh, now's the time. You know, Trump talked about uh, draining the swamp. Well, by adding folks like Purdue and, and Loeffner, you just brought two more millionaires, uh, multimillionaires into the swamp, and they've all they've done is use that to benefit themselves and their stock portfolios. So it's... Uh, I think our members are understanding. I think the community is. So we'll see. But we're, we're excited.
someone sent me a picture of a billboard um, and it said that Loeffler and Purdue didn't come through for Trump. So let's get rid of them. And I'm thinking, yeah, let's get rid of them. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, that, that's one of the things about the, uh, the Republicans infighting is here you have the president who's bashed uh, mail-in voting, bashed the, the, the process. He's bashing the governor and the secretary of state here saying that they don't know what the hell they're doing and, and that they stole his election. Uh, and then you have, on the other hand, folks trying to get people to use some of the same uh, methods that we did, which was encourage people to do the same thing and vote by mail. Uh, and so who knows? Hopefully that uh, all this infighting will, will keep a, a number of Republicans from, uh, from going to the polls. And uh, I know we're working uh, extremely, extremely hard to try to get our members back to the polls. And uh, I think people are energized and I do think, and I think we're going to, I think we're going to pull this thing out. It's going to be real close again. So it might be three, four, five days before they get done counting the votes, but I think we got a shot. Well, before we go, Charlie, I just want to give Jeremy, my co-host, a chance to ask you a question or two if, uh, if there's something on his mind. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so one thing I'm wondering, and you, you kind of touched on it just a second ago where you said, um, that you feel like there's a lot, people are energized right now. And that was my biggest question coming off of, of the presidential election, which was, I mean, it seemed like we've been working towards that election for over four years to me, it, it's how it seemed. Um, and then it all kind of crescendoed into n no real answers for, you know, a drawn out period. And it's, it's just, I mean, it's, it's really still not finalized. There's still all kind of fighting going on and you all, had to move right into the the special runoff election and is there are you sensing any kind of uh like drain from people or any kind like are people just like you know walking away like done right i i think there was initially uh some voter fatigue if you will yeah uh, one of the things that that uh we made a, uh decisions we made as an organization was that's the reason why we did take that break after uh the election and a few days around, of course, around the Thanksgiving holiday, is we did want to give folks a break. But right after the Thanksgiving holiday, we we got back and hitting it hard. And uh, you know, the response has really been great. I'll give you an example. Today there was a a rally, uh, get out the boat rally, just uh, literally across the expressway from where I'm sitting right now at the IBW building in Atlanta, in our offices, uh, where they had. 500 people show up uh, to a rally where they had to sit outside. And the weather today was like, I don't know, 42, three degrees here in Georgia. It was pretty cold. And you know, they were they were distanced. They, were, they had chairs set up for people. You had to sit in the chair. Uh, they had the mask and all that. And uh, again, there, there was uh, 400 people there. And... Um, I know this uh, uh, Friday, which is what, two days from now, uh, we're going to be doing a rally with uh, uh, both of our candidates here at the IBW building. It'll be also be out in the parking lot, and uh, we've been getting calls, and and uh, we just purchased 10,000 uh, uh, union sides and said this union family supports uh, Warnock and Osaw and the Georgia AFL, and uh, we got the first 2,000 in today and i believe over half of them are gone already i mean people are just walking in and say i want to sign i want to sign so people are excited i think they they sense the opportunity to really change this country and change uh, the country for working folks and so therefore they're they're extremely excited and and you know uh, that's all we can do is do the best we can so i'm i'm excited uh charlie one last thing before we uh before we break here uh, where can people go to follow the work you all are doing? Do you have, is there, can they follow you on Facebook or a website yeah, that, that can you can go to the AFL's Facebook page? They can uh, go to the uh, well, our website is we've been having some issues with it, but uh, no, you can go to the Georgia AFL's uh, Facebook page. Uh, we're on Twitter. We're on all those things. I'm not the one that uh, will lead you there. But uh, uh, we have a, a, a great team here. We have a, a terrific uh, political coordinator, a lady named uh, Hannah Perkins, and then our secretary treasurer, Yvonne Robinson, do great work. And, you know, that's, 
that's what's really been overwhelming to me is the support and the offers of my brothers and sisters around the country to help us. Uh, you know, they, they, they know the work that we put into this, uh, to this election cycle, uh, and they want to help us get to the finish line. And it's not a matter of, um, of anything more than, than supporting brothers and sisters in the labor movement and trying to give the, the middle class back to working folks. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Charlie. We really appreciate you uh, joining us in this effort and uh, you know, getting that word out there. Uh, so you have a good rest of your evening. Stick around if you want and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. And, and maybe you can join us for the free for all uh, once we're done with the second, second half. Well, I, I'd be honest with you, I'm probably going to have to leave, but uh, I appreciate Jeremy and Tanya for, for inviting me and uh, you guys do a great job on this show. I've been on a couple of times and I know the labor movement around the country certainly thinks the world of, of the work that you guys have all been doing. And uh, again, I just appreciate the opportunity to be here. And so uh, have a great show and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see you soon. Hopefully uh, we'll talk after we win this thing. Awesome. We keep up the good work, get some rest and keep fighting a good fight. All right. Thank you so much. Take care, brother. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good luck. Yep. January 5th. It was Charlie Fleming, the Georgia State AFL-CIO president. You better listen, my brother, because if you do, you can hear there are voices still calling from across the year. And they're crying across the ocean, they're crying across the land, and they will until we all come to understand. None of us are free, none of us are free.